Hey there, hackers. Let's get crackers. That went flying. So there are five main variable types that you have in Temple OS. They're zero length void, char, short, int, long, and then you also got double and float, but we're not going there today. We're just gonna focus on the basics. Each main type gives you a range of numbers that you can use, and each one is bigger than the last. Ooh, those thick number values. And to control where that range is, you have to decide whether it's unsigned or signed. And there are two ways, two ways that you decide it, and they are you and I. No pun intended. Unsigned means the range starts from zero to the max value that you can have. However, you can't have negative numbers with that. Signed means that you can have negative numbers, but basically you shift that range down so many below zero, usually by half, so your maximum value is cut in half, but now you get the negative numbers. Let's jump into it. So the first thing you have is the void type, which is declared as U0. Let's try seeing the value. Okay then, that's weird. How about setting it? It's probably because we forgot. Whoops, void types are zero size, meaning you can't mess with those values. So let's declare an unsigned char with the value U8. And yes, we're gonna name it U8. Sorry for being confusing, folks. Let's see if it has value. It does. This just means that the variable was assigned to whatever random numbers were in the variable's memory location RAM. So let's set it to the max value for this variable, which is 255. So let's go ahead and increment it by one using plus plus. Look at that, it's zero. What happens if we try to make it a negative one by doing minus minus? Or minus minus? Hey, it's 255. Remember that range length and signed versus unsigned? Now you get it. Unsigned, no negatives. Signed, negatives, but less range. So now let's do a signed character at max value of 127. The value checks out. Let's increment it. Now it's negative 128? This is because signing shifts the range halfway to allow negative numbers. Play around with it. So okay, that's great, but what happens if we try to set it above the max value? Wait, whoa, 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 57? Huh, let's try to do it as a negative instead, see what happens. Negative 57? Huh, that's because going past the max value will reset it to zero and count up from there. It's kind of difficult to think about, but just think about binary carrying bits are lost in there. We'll focus on that later. So how do you go past the limit of a number? That's easy, just declare a pointer. You do a regular declaration, but at the name, you use an asterisk before you actually declare the variable name. This defines the variable as a pointer to a memory location in RAM, and the value is read from the stored memory address. Confused yet? That's why you should know assembly, and C before you do holy C. Now, if you know C, you can find the memory address by prefixing the variable you declared with ampersand, or and sign. I don't know what you would call that stupid thing. Cool, that's the memory address. Let's try it for our previous variables we made. Wow, look at that, different addresses. So now let's try getting into text instead of numbers, and we're gonna do a string value using i8 and see what we can get. Remember to use double quotes for strings and single quotes for characters. So what's its value? 56 looks kind of weird. Can we print the string? Well, that's not right. Oh, remember that there's a length, and when you use characters or strings of text, it uses a lot of numbers in there, so it's obvious that that's what happened here. And yes, that means that even using unsigned 64-bit values do have a limit. Let's redo it this time, but as a pointer. And its value seems really large now, but will it print? Yup. So a lot of the benefits of using variables. Salty in Temple OS. Thanks for watching and Hattie Hacky. Don't judge me.